Hi, everyone. Today we're talking about the Divi theme from Elegant Themes. I'm going to show you how to use it and why it's a great piece of software to get for your WordPress websites. Okay. Normally it's $249, one time fee. It gives you the Divi theme, their extra theme set, the Bloom plugin, the Monarch plugin, a whole bunch of website packs, lifetime upgrades, and it's a one time fee, $249 all in. You could pay $90 a year or you can pay a one-time fee and have lifetime access. They've been around for quite a few years now, so you can feel pretty safe that they're going to be around for some time to come. A link we're going to provide you today will give you 20% off, okay? Uh, that brings it down to $199, one-time fee, or $70 a year. So this is a really affordable rate here to be able to get access to one of the most powerful WordPress themes that is out there. And we're going to show you how easy it is to use and why it's so powerful, okay? Let's start with one of our websites that we have here, okay? This is a cleaning services website that, yes, it does use the, the Divi theme already, um, but we're going to update it and make some changes to make it look a lot better. When you do use the Divi theme, the first thing that you want to do in WordPress is you need to install the theme, which you can see we have here. It does tell us that there's a new version available. But if you had just purchased it, you would download the Divi.zip off of the Elegant Themes website. And then you would go to add new, you would upload a theme, and you would choose your file. And you could have your file like I have here in my downloads, divi.zip, open it, and you would click install now. As soon as you install it, it will show up here for you to activate. One of the first things that you want to do once you have your Divi theme installed is go to the updates tab and you have to put in your username and an api key so you can make different api keys for all of your websites that you have and this will allow you to have control over it and you can deactivate the key so it no longer gets updates in the future if you were to sell off the website or something like that so your username for logging into them the API key. You can use the same key for all your websites, or you can set up new keys for each website. It's all included in their one price. So once that's in there, this allows you to have access to first things, updates. So if we go to our themes and it says I have a new version available, oh, now it comes up. It must have finally connected to my API, and now we're able to hit update now. Updated. Now we have the latest and greatest from Divi. So let's go ahead and talk about the Divi settings dashboard. Okay, real quick. We're just going to run through it real fast on the fly. If you have a logo for your website that you want to display at the top of it, that's where you would put it in now right here. They have a whole ton of settings for a whole bunch of different things that you can do with Divi. So take your time to learn all of them. If you know your Facebook URLs, your Twitter URLs, all those things that you want to have linked through social icons across the site, that's where you would set it. If you have a blog, you can control how many posts are shown on certain pages, along with controlling some transitions, smooth scrolling, and animations and whatnot. We're not going to dive too much into a lot of these things. Um, we're going to keep it simple and just get you rocking and rolling really quick and show you why you should invest in this theme. Do keep in mind, we are an affiliate, so uh, as a small family-run company that we are working from our home offices, they, if you do purchase through our link, it doesn't cost you any more than it would if you bought through anyone else's link. We just get a commission for referring the sale, so we do appreciate it. Under navigation pages, uh, you can control what is seen on the navigation bar. So if you have certain pages that you don't want to show there, you simply click on it, and it will remove it from the bar when it has a X there. Categories as well. So if you have a blog, you can have certain categories show up on the board on the menu bar at the top. If you click them here, uh, red X means it's not there. Green check means it is there. These are certain settings for the Divi Builder. We're going to show you that Visual Builder. It is really awesome. It makes things really easy to use. If you're doing some sort of advertisements or you want to do banner images, uh, you can control a lot of those things from here. And again, uh, more settings if you have your code from Google Analytics, put it right here in the head of your blog. It makes a lot of those things really easy, all right? One of the other great things they have is the theme customizer here. 
And the theme customizer allows you to see uh, your main page of your website and do some initial settings. So we're going to talk about some of those initial settings right now, okay? Some of the initial settings you might want to check out are general settings, site identity, the title, and the tagline of the website. You can enable or disable a box layout, depending on how you want it to look. Change your overall body text size. These are all kind of the general settings that would affect everything overall. And if you have a background image, if you're using a box layout, you can change that image that shows up back there. Header and navigation, this has to do with your menu bars and the type of headers that you have. So you can hide logos if you don't want it to be up there. If you unhide it, you'll see that the generic Divi logo is there. That's that logo setting that we did under theme settings. Or you can just click hide and it won't show up there. You can also change your navigation settings and type of menus that you have in here. Um, you can have it go down the side, across the top, in the center, however you want. When you're done, you can hit publish if you made some changes that you want to save, or you can just hit the X if you didn't change anything that you want to save. The last main thing I want to show you here, and this is really important and sometimes what people don't find right away, home page settings. You can either have your home page be a static page or your latest posts. So if it is a blog format and you want it to just show only your blog uh, posts on it and show the latest ones, you could do that. Or you could do a static page and choose a page that you've already constructed to be your home page. So if you do create a brand new home page, you could then change your home page here so that it can be seen very easily, which is kind of what we're going to do in this tutorial. So we're going to back out of the customizer. That's kind of an overall site customization type thing as opposed to individual page customizer, okay? So I want to make, in this case, a new home page for this website, a new landing page. We want to freshen it up a little bit, okay? So it loads up with the typical, I would call it, WordPress, I think they call it Gutenblocks now or something like that. I really prefer the classical editor when it comes to WordPress. I like this layout a lot better. I don't like the other one. Um, and Divi has its own kind of integration into it. So we're going to make our new page here when it will finish loading. There it is. Okay. We're going to name this one. Um, Galaxy. when my computer catches up here, janitorial services. Okay, and this is going to be the name of our new homepage. We're going to save draft real quick just to get saved up. created our permalink down here, and now we're going to get into using the Divi theme. So we're going to go ahead and click on Use Divi Builder. So this is the back-end builder, okay? This is where you would be able to make your modules so you can make how you want it divided up. Do you want one whole big width section? Do you want it half and half, a third, 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 quarter, quarter, quarter? I mean, they have so many different ways of being able to break up the page. This is very similar to Bootstrap and how you're able to have different divisions on the page with customized widths and really change the layout of your site. And then you can add modules to that and everything. It's, it's really awesome. The other thing that they have that is really sweet is if we want to build it on the front and as they call it okay so this is the divi visual builder which basically allows us to pull up our page and we'll give it a second to load it it does take a moment to load and it will say do you want to build it from scratch we'll let it finish loading here before i start moving around too much do you want to build it from scratch do you want to use a pre-made layout or do you want to clone one of your pages that you've already made so in this case i want to show you all the awesome layout packs that you get from Elegant Themes when you purchase the Divi theme from them. 
So you do have to make sure that you have your API key installed in order to be able to see all of these. If you don't, it'll tell you that you're not able to have access to them. There are 134 layout packs. That is crazy. Each pack has different pages on them for you to use already kind of laid out. So if you're trying to spin up a website for someone really fast or for yourself, this is great. And you can click on each one to see how the layouts look. And you're free to use the pictures that they include in them and everything, too, which is really awesome. Or maybe like the pricing page, what have you. We'll go back if say we don't like that one. And it'll come back here. And we can search for a style. So let's say I want to say cleaning. Let me see what they've got for cleaning. Cleaning company about page, cleaning company home page. These are pretty cool. So maybe we're going to try one of those. Um... And they also have landing page. So when you click on it, again, those are the different layouts that are in the pack that you can use. I actually really like that. It's not bad. Let's go ahead and use this layout. And it will go ahead and import the content and give us an estimated time. Green check mark. Looks like we're good to go. We'll give it one more minute. Boom. It has dropped that content in to our page for us to use. And now, using their visual builder, this is, we're seeing it live, how it looks on the website, and decide if this is how we want to roll with our page. You can keep saving drafts down here in the lower right-hand corner. But let's kind of dive in and start using the Visual Builder. This is the overall outside. So when you hover over it, you see that purple section. That's your overall area for that module section. Then when you get down here, the shaded black area, that's one, a section inside of that module, so it's breaking it up. But we can just hop right on here and start changing text. Professional cleaning services for all of Houston. Boom. They have some built-in content here. Obviously, they're just using the gibberish that we need to change out. So we can go ahead and just start typing over that as well. From home to office. Carpets, carpet, tile, walls, countertops, and more. They give you some predefined buttons here so you can see how the buttons work. If we click on those, we'll see it should come up here. Sometimes you have to go down to another section and come back up. There it is. So we want that cog wheel right there. And this will bring up the title, the content that we edited directly on the page. So I'm actually going to update that one right now to office there. We have our buttons that are there. We can change what they say. But down here under link is where we're able to click on and type in where we want those buttons to go. So if we knew those links right now, we could go ahead and put them in there. So, for example, the services one, I would have to go and pull it up from what page it goes to, and we'll add that in later. Now, let's say that you wanted to add something else to a certain part of this. Obviously, you're going to want to update the content, but we can keep going through and doing that like we did with the other one. You can hit the cogwheel and work inside of a, a what you see is what you get editor like you would in the back end. But when you save it, you're able to see how it looks in real time right here on the front. If you want to change the images, you simply click on it. Again, the cogwheel comes up. It says it's an image module. Click the settings, and you could choose a different picture. These are all the pictures that we already had on the website and some of the ones that just got brought in as well when we were doing our adding of the layout, okay? If you wanted to add 
something and it's not there, when you're inside of a module like you are here, the blue is the overall outside in this case, that's the section, and then the green is the internal module. You can hit plus on the green module and add another row to it. So let's say we want to add a what I call a kidney row. Two evils, two even sides right next to each other. Gray marks mean that there's nothing inside of that row presently, so it will automatically come up and say, well, what do you want to add here? Uh, maybe in my case, I want to add a contact form. Name, email, message. Nah, you know, I don't really need the message. Name and email title is contact us today. Success message when it gets put through. Thank you. Someone will reach out to you soon. Submit button should say request contact, for example. There may be things on it that you don't want, and you can just press OK, see what it looks like, request contact. It has a 9 plus 5 here. It's one thing I don't like about their contact form. It doesn't tell you that's a captcha, it's a question that you have to answer or not. It kind of leaves it up to the user to have to guess that. So we can look under elements, I believe it is, show captcha, and just turn off the captcha so you don't need it. Contact us today, name and email address. We could go back with the cogwheel and we could add a new field if we wanted to. I'll ask us the field ID, the title, the options of it, minimum and maximum lengths, conditional logic. Uh, you can turn that on and just say is it related to one of the other rules. If the name is this, then it has to do that, for example. Some pretty cool stuff. I don't want to save any of that. We're going to just leave that that way for now. The other side of it then, are we have a gray box. What do you want to put here? Do you want to put a blurb? These are pretty cool. It's kind of like a testimonial blurb. It will show it in a, in a little box to make it stand out a little bit. Gallery of photos, an image, a map. They have so many different modules. I highly, highly recommend you go in there and check out what they have. You could add a video that will automatically play. You could just add a text box to be able to have an inline YouTube video or something like that. Makes it really simple. Accordions, these are pretty cool. I'm sure you've seen these before. You have two or three of them. You could have a design of whether you want left to right, up to down. But when you click on, when the user clicks on certain sections, it opens it up and down, and you have different content under each accordion. So it makes a way to put lots of information in a little space for people to see it. So to spend your time, go through it, clean it all up, make it look nice. You save your draft. And then you can hit publish. And this will then be live on your website. It will add pages automatically to the navigation. So if you don't want it there, you have to automatically, you have to go back and turn it off and whatnot. So if I refresh the page as I just did, which I should have exited the visual builder first so it wouldn't reload it, but that's fine. You'll see it says Galaxy Janitorial Services now here in the navigation bar because it automatically added our new page to the navigation bar on the fly. So if we don't want it to display there, that's where we have to go back to our theme settings and change it out. So this has been a really quick overview of the Divi theme from Elegant Themes. It is very powerful. When you do purchase it, use our link, get that 20% off, save some money. That's what we're all about. Um, you also get the Bloom and the Monarch plugins, okay? I haven't used the Monarch plugin yet, but the Bloom plugin is really nice. I think you might have seen it at one point real quick on here when I was going through and showing you the theme customizer, but it basically allows you to do really powerful opt-ins to try and draw people to give you their email address and stuff like that. You can have them fly in, you can have them on the side of your page, you can have them do it in different pop-up methods and only show one time. It's really nice. Uh, let me see if I can show it to you real quick. So we'll edit our visual builder. We'll go ahead and click on, let's go back to our dashboard and you'll see Bloom right here. And this is where you can create your opt-in forms, okay? So we have our, what I call leave capture opt-in form. I'll just show you the settings for it real quick. Basically it attaches to uh, MailChimp but you can attach to any provider you want. 
lights here. You design them. You can click preview to see what it looks like. So here it is. See, it says subscribe, join our tips, advice, and deals group. Your name and your email, join the group, automatically puts it into MailChimp where you can start your drip campaigns. They have all sorts of fun ways that you can have these things happen. Display settings allows you to say whether it's a fade in, it's one for the side, where you want it, and then what happens when it's success. What Do you do a success message? Do you have them go to a certain URL? So it's really customizable, it's really nice, and it's included. So this really helps replace something like Optin Monster or something like that to make your life really easy. I appreciate you checking out this very fast demonstration of the Divi Elegant Themes um, theme for WordPress. If it's something you like, please purchase it through our link. It would really help us out. If you need any other videos or questions, feel free to drop us a line, and we'd be happy to make a video and show you some more about the Divi theme from Elegant Themes.